Here, boys. Hector, here. Cape Town. Two days. First test. Durban. We're going to do it. Yes. Are we going to do it? One more. Access. 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 Hang on, on a second. Cut, cut. Let yourself go! OK, Hector. Who's this? Hector, hang on a second. Sorry, do you mean? Bit more energy. Take it again. Bit more energy. Come on. A snappy. Bit more energy. Come on. And action. Hector here. Two days. Durban. Doing loads of that. Doing loads of that. Into the camera. Waving my arms about for no reason. I'll tell you something. Two days. Hector. Hector here. Cape Town. Uh, Let yourself go! I'm cut, and I'm not from fucking the dog. To play for your country is, is great, and uh, to represent the British and Irish Lions is, is phenomenal. It's, it's a unique occasion. It's the whole tour, it's just a huge challenge, and. Um... You know, all the boys have just got to dig in. We might ne never see these blokes come back here again, and this is our one chance to have a look at them. Yeah. They've been waiting for you to come for four years. They want to get in yeah. so bad. Lions! 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 Where did you get that shirt, by the way? The British Lions. Uh, the British Lions. and Irish Lions. The British Lions. Tom Croft! <laughs> ah! Are you wearing that for a bet? The British and Irish Lions. That's exactly it. For the British Lions. I really do think that the British and Irish Lions have a... Uh, have a fantastic side and a really, really good opportunity uh, of you know making a few upsets. Uh, it's going to be tough to all, but I back us two one. Have a look at this, baby. This is the line chaser. For the next three weeks, lads, this is our house. Oh, this is it now, Richard. My mobile studio, Hector. This is where we're going to be for. Look at this, the cooker. The right, the guests can sit down here. We get all this nicely done. Pimp it, we pimp it up. There we go. Lads, <laughs> we'll have to do the ceremonial song. Lions, 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 lions. Be in the geeking. Rugby genius, wise old owl. Colin Murray, position offside. Malcolm. Open side banker. Honest Sir Donaldson, mind your own business. Berkey. Hi, girls. Jennifer. Locked. It's well for you, lads. The fucking country is in a recession. And there you are down there spending your money when you should be up here spending it. I hope you have a desperate time down there. <laughs> This looks like the core of the World Cup winning squad who've stayed around and managed their game time and their career specifically to round off their careers by beating the Lions. I mean, look at it from their point of view. You win a World Cup, you win a couple of Super 14 titles of your Blue Bulls, and then you beat the Lions. I mean, that pretty much completes the set, doesn't it? I have a feeling that uh, the opening exchanges are going to be dominated by the Lions just because, you know, they've played together most recently. But I think the physicality of the home team and the fact that we've played at home and the momentum of being the world champions will... We'll see us win at the end. If you win the first test match, you only have to win 50% of the, the next. rest. If you lose it, you've got to win 100%. It's a huge mental thing, isn't it? Massive mental thing. And that's why the first test is everything. I've just bumped into ex-Irish coach and now American coach Eddie O'Sullivan. Eddie, you're... Yeah. Give me your skin, Hector. Uh, you do now, bro. Your bro, your bro. Yeah, 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 not too close. Good. Tell me this. The Lions tour 2005 was a shambles. The, the spirit was all wrong. Too many players. I and have now to look say, at this tour. It's a complete turnaround. Well, I totally disagree with you, obviously. You know, I mean, I, I think sometimes you see an orange tree, you know, and you've got to be careful you don't pick too many oranges out of the tree. Otherwise, you've got no juice left, you know. But I think on this tour, he's actually picked too few players. You know, I think on, on, the, on the tour in 2005, we picked the exact amount of players. The spirit was fantastic, maybe not amongst the players, but certainly amongst the coaches. Geez, we had a great time in New Zealand. The Welsh and the Irish, particularly, would, would be regarded as being essentially good tourists. And it's very. It's unusual how often they provide the captains as well. Although I do think you've got to give the English uh, credit for being, like, when it's a strong English, it's usually strong lines. I met this Irish man called Hector. Yes, he's all right. Looks a little bit like a tablecloth. I think part of the trouble with the lines is that we, we analyse it too much. You know, I think we, we worry too much about for how to get one team out of four nations. I'm just a bit worried that they might have to bring over some other Celt. It was hard enough as it is, dear. I think, you know, rugby basically appeals to people of a very similar mentality. 
and they'll get on. Six Welsh, five Irish, four English, and not a Scotsman in sight. As you all know, there is not one Scotsman in the entire Test 22, but I would just like to explain that I am a very, very proud Scot. We just happen to be shit at rugby. So the team's announced and we all dissect and, and then we write down our test team. We're all Irish journalists. And I looked over and there was about 15 English journalists with one guy in the centre and a pad. And they were obviously doing the same thing. And there was this group of Welsh journalists over and they were all doing the same. And in the other corner was just this kind of empty space, kind of symbolic of Scotland. <laughs> it's sad, really. I actually think it's sad. Jesus Christ, this is an absolute nightmare. I've spent two years scrimping and saving to make this trip. I come all the way down to South Africa for the first taste, and there's not one Scotsman in the entire fucking squad! Jesus! Next up, the Shark Tank Durban lads. Keep it going. Hey, Hector! Hey, Hector! Hey, hey, wait! Well. Hector, like, wait! All my high notes in the back! You need me with you! Derbs is highly dangerous unless you're a trained athlete. Hector, that thing on the ground, it's actually called the accelerator. Would you put your goddamn foot on it? Welcome to Durban. This is your Nelson Nerve. Turn right. Uh, who taught you to drive, Hector? Oh, oh, oh. I've just arrived in Derbs after an 1800 kilometre trip from Cape Town in a piece of crap camper van driven by Hector. Every time he turned a corner, I was thrown from one side of the van to the other. Then he decides to stop for an Indian. Curry, that is. I have a hole on me like a Japanese flag. Thanks be to Christ, Toby's dad happens to be a recession-proof billionaire. Time for a little dip, methinks. Alele Blue! We finally made it to Durban in the warm tropical waters of the Indian Ocean after a tense and tiring and long journey in the Lion Chaser. But the big news round here is that John Hayes, the mighty man from Munster, has been drafted into the Lion Squad to replace you and Murray. Go on, the bull! Now, the weather. Pretty bloody hot and intense if you happen to be a lion in Durban. And you avoid a salad chasers there for the lads that never got a chance. Look, boys, Jerry Flannery, Tomas O'Leary, and Alan Quinlan. We will never forget them. Say it to the camera there, boys. We, we will never forget them. They say Jerry Flannery cried when he got the little in when he got the injury, he cried, and they said the last man from Munster to cry after he got an injury was you. Um, Is that true that you cry? Like, tell us about that. 97, wasn't it? I didn't make Bally's cry. Did you, <laughs> did you not cry? I did Were not you not cry. crying? I was actually happy to come home that time. What? <laughs> Oh, my Jerry, lad. Hector, what? this Lions tour has started in earnest. The Bull Hayes is on his way to South Africa. Fantastic. The Bull Hayes, what is it? He's a, he's a legend. He's a legend. I know, I know, I know. Look at this. Look at, Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Am I the Bull Hayes? The Bull Hayes. Give it up there. What is it? What he's is a it? I'll tell you what he is. He's a legend. Well, first of all, let me go down and tell you something, right? I'm the coach of the United States of America now. But four years ago, I was the assistant coach of the Lions. And obviously it didn't go that well for us. We lost the series 3-0. But I thought we had a great opportunity. So the Lions players will know that they have a great opportunity as well uh, tomorrow. They go to bed tonight uh, on the cusp uh, of history. And they have a great chance. They have a superb chance. But it's going to be very interesting this year to see how they respond to the hacker. You know? match day, first test, 10 o'clock in the morning. There's thousands coming up to the stadium and we've got pride place. Look at the line chaser. There's men here, Rich Dark Cooper's here. There's men from Tipperary, from, from the banner. Look at Trevor Brennan. We'll be talking to him in a minute. Oh, in this, in this, in this studio. The Have a look around here. This is a mobile studio. We're editing as we go. Rory's in there, Mark's there. Rory, say hello. Come on, the lion. <laughs> And we've got it all sorted, boys. The T-shirts, the beer, the whole shebang. I've got a bit of breakfast for you here, Trevor. Oh, grand, grand, grand. I know, you, you might have had a beer last night. Where's my knife and fork? No knife and fork in South I Africa. Did, I, did, I did have a beer. I had a beer last night. I was coming in last night, nice and early. I was having a few beers with Dewey Morris, Paul Wallace. Into the hotel, half ten. Who did I meet? Jerry Earls, the legend. So, so can, I, can you lift up your cap there and ask me, is this what Jerry <laughs> Earls did to you in the casino last night? Roscoe, can you see that? 
by the clash of heads with Gary Teichman, the South African captain in 1996, 97, 98. It was one of them tackles where I couldn't say, I'm going to go in there and clear the rook out, but I forgot to put my hands up, put, put the hands in the pockets and I led with the head. <laughs> and there you go, and I come off the horse. So come here, do you see them? Do you see them sticking with them for the first 15 minutes? Half time, you think it's, do you think the Lions have a, a real chance today? Because they've been playing the five or six warm-up matches. I do, I do, I, I do. I, that's where I said the Lions will have the edge today. Is they played five or six games. Every player who's put on that Lions jersey today <laughs> will have <laughs> fucking <laughs> that bacon is wrong. <laughs> come on, lads, come on. Where's your voices? <laughs> Oh, you want us to sing? Hey, are, 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 you're, not from, you're, not, you're not from bloody Wales, are you? <laughs> the Welsh are the, are the biggest net contributors to the, the Red Army of Lions supporters. 50% thereabouts. Is it true there's no recession in Wales? No one left in Wales. <laughs> Lions! 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 All the pundits and commentators said the Lions won't last in the professional era. Um, and yet, as we know, anything that makes money. Are you alone? T-shirts for the lads that never got a chance. Large, here's a large. Yeah, there's the first sale on South African soil. It's like a festival here. There's people with barbecues. It is, yeah. People like pulling up. Or something. Yeah, well, I hope you hear yeah, that about 12 o'clock tonight will be the same thing. Really? Now the party carries on. It's one of the biggest parties, I think. As yeah. long as we win. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you good losers? <laughs> uh, so, 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 so. So, Gary, Trevor Brown has a huge gash in his forehead, but you seem to be okay. Yeah, I, I think he maybe got a bit more of a concussion than he thought because I didn't play that game and uh, maybe he's confusing. <laughs> he's completely <laughs> confused. He told us he hit you. Trying to get through all the traffic. The red bus is coming, lads. A huge bus with the lines written on the side of it. Let them know we're here. Look at Ian McGee is in up the front. Goodbye, McGee and boy. You lead us. It is going to be 80 minutes of just car crash collisions right across the pitch. That's what it's going to be. It's it's going to be fairly brutal. We've been playing a bit of airy fairy rugby. Doesn't suit South Africans. No. You'd like to get stuck in and go over the ball. For the Lions to win, there has to be an inherent weakness in the host nation. I think the Springboks, with a slightly wacky coach, will be very, very good. And it's all South Africa in the opening exchanges. And John Schmidt has scored a try. A try for the Springboks. And what a start for the captain. And there's trouble in the scrum. The beast is giving victory a ton of time. And yet another penalty to the box. And Ugo Mokov on the first. But did he touch it down? Extraordinary delay out here. There seems to be a row between Bryce Lawrence and the TMO Christoph Bados. Is it a 5 meter scrum or is it a 22? And good movement from the Lions. And Brian O'Driscoll cuts through and he passes to Tom Croft who's over for the score. The boys have been dominating our pack and they're winning these penalties and they're just scrumming us and scrumming us and getting these points on the board. They're not invincible but I'll tell you one thing, when you see them when they get the ball out wide, they're mad and them boys, it's danger. And Heinrich Brousseau is over for another try and the Springboks extend their lead. And Adam Jones being brought on to steady the scrum. And now Aldrisco, he draws two players and puts it to Tom Croft who's over for his second try. And the Lions come again, and Mike Phillips is sniping, but, but, did he touch it down? No, no, he knocked it forward. And here, yeah, Luka Monja must score, oh, what a tackle by Mona Stein. And the Villiers has emptied his bench too early here. And try this time for Mike Phillips, but surely too late for the Lions. Second half has been absolutely fantastic, end to end stuff. The box scored again, first five minutes out of the second half. And then the Lions came back, relentless stuff. The pack came in, Adam Jones much better. Jonathan Callum comes in, Matthew Reese plays a blinder. They got the ball wide, scored loads of tries, and have brought it back to 26-21. With a dodgy referee, it's not a bad result. Lads, I saw the game. I was disappointed we didn't get going to the second half. How did you see it? Phil Vickery, nine points, lost us a game. What when was Ad happening? Yeah, what was happening? When Adam Jones come on, the game changed. It was a Welsh for, uh, interpretation. We don't know. Welsh but. first row then, like you're yeah, exactly. Reece, right, definitely. Kevin Jenkins, and the ref was man of the match. Bryce, I had a decision. Can I think he? 
The ball was not touching goal. Scrum five red. Was it touching goal here? No. So, so, sorry? What? Sorry? What? what? No. Go on. No. The ball doesn't touch in goal. Okay, so it was carried in by red? Yes, scrum five. Or, or why scrum five? Why scrum five? Because uh, the green player play the ball later uh, uh, the touch line. You will play the ball here or in goal? Yes, scrum five. You need to tell me why though. Why? Because the green player yes. played the ball later the Yes, but was it was it in no. goal? Was yes. It? Right, then it's a twenty-two. Thank you. No, no, no. Listen, what? No. Come back here. Where are you? Go ahead. Listen, listen to me, you fucking kiwi asshole. What it's a it? fucking scrum five, you Thank you. Merde. I think the Lions gave the Springboks too much respect in the first half. They were sitting back thinking, this is the world champions, they're going to come with something fantastic, and they didn't really. Um, I think the Springboks capitalised on it. And when the Lions realised what was happening, they were a good couple of points down. You've been in that dressing room as a Springbok on loads of occasions. What, the, what, what would the Bok dressing room be like after that match? They would be happy they won. They would take the result. But they look at themselves and say, we ended up fighting for the game in the last 25 minutes. We didn't do ourselves any justice by the way we played. We've now given the Lions the belief that they can beat us. Where in this game they came out there respecting us as world champions. We didn't play like world champions the whole yeah. game. We played in stages. The Lions probably now believe more than ever that they can beat the Springbok side. This is the Sunday Independent and they're saying here by, the, by then, the Lions management team will have sent a missive to Paddy O'Brien, the IRB referee chief, on how Bryce Lawrence, with some help from the Beast, blew victory out of the match. In a pure clash of one-on-one, -on -one, the Beast got under him. So he's, he's got him there rather than there, and that just allows him to lift, smash him up into the air. You say, in Britain and Ireland, that we Springboks have no spontaneity, no sense of humour. No desire to sing. That is not right. And here is an example. Beast. 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 I've actually checked a Mike Phillips try from a different angle. It's actually a try. You can see the, the two fingers on the side is still sort of off on Huge the Huge decision, wasn't it? Major decision. Referees are human, eh? and uh, you got to treat them like your girlfriends, spoil them, make them think they're loved, and I'll look after in the field. Our Father, who art in Durban, lion be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be won in Pretoria as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sin bins, as we forgive those who win against us, and lead us not into hesitation, and deliver us from the beast. Amen. Listen, God, what I really mean to say is, thanks a million for the first test. 80 minutes of great rugby, three tries, but for the second test, could we have a better fucking ref, please? Welcome back to Rugby Club, exclusively live on Sky Sports 1. The Lions are in South Africa, and you can watch it every single step of the way with us here in Rugby Club. Joining me as usual, the panellists, Will Greenwood, Paul Wallace and Dewey Morris. First you, Will Greenwood, what's been your highlight of this tour? I think the highlight of this tour so far has been the partnership between Brian O'Driscoll and Jamie Roberts. I mean, Jamie Roberts bursting through like a racehorse and the delicate offloads, fantastic soft hands. Then Brian O'Driscoll just comes right inside him. Fantastic and very, very exciting, I find. Over to you, Paul. You've been on these tours. Can we expect much change in second test? Well, it's very difficult to know, isn't it, what they're going to do? I mean, one of the areas they've looked at, you know, is the back row, but I thought my brother David played a very, very good, you know, first test. You know, a very, very, very good break. I thought my brother David did very well overall. You know, very good at the breaks. And I thought my brother David was absolutely superb in a lot of areas of the game. You know, very, some, some, some vital kind of defensive tackles. I thought my brother made. And so they mentioned that David's my brother. Uh, and finally, Dewey, do you concur? Do you agree with that? <laughs> absolutely, I, I agree. Couldn't agree more. I, I agree with everyone. Back to you, Will. Score on Saturday. Oh, chance to be a fine thing. Is that an offer, mate? <laughs> <laughs> he got you there, mate, didn't he? <laughs> Today we've decided to get as close to the Lions as we possibly can and have a look at this. There's the Lions Hotel. 
Here's the Lions bus, and across the road is our mobile studio, the Lion Chaser. There's a big storm coming into Cape Town. Tonight's the last midweek match. It's the emerging Springboks, and who's there to steady the ship? It's our captain, Ron Nogara. Come on, the Lions! Ronan, you must be absolutely thrilled. Oh, it's great, you know, it's a nice honour. Right? When you received that news, it must have been a career high for you, was it? Well, I suppose it is in ways, you know. But... Yes, nonetheless, it must be tinged with a little bit of sadness in that you've wrestled the captaincy from your great friend and monster colleague, Paul O'Connell. Well, that's only for this match. Like, Paul will obviously be captain on Saturday, you know. Yes, so not... nonetheless, it must be a huge blow to Paul O'Connell. Thanks, know. Ronan. Now, some shit music. You're in uh, Cape Town for a good reason. You're refereeing the emerging box. I'm looking forward to the game now, actually, tonight. It should be, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a tough game. I've given the results on uh, Saturday. Do you, do you need eyes in the back of your head? No, I wouldn't say you need eyes in the back of your head. You know, like, they're no different than any other team. You play physical. Um, you don't mind a team that plays physical so long as they don't step across. There's a very fine line, but if they step across the line, you'd like to think that you'd be able to deal with it. Joining me now is Alistair Donaldson, yeah, the only... Mr. Mr. Donaldson, if you don't mind. Excuse me, Mr. Donaldson, the only surviving Ulster fan on the tour. Mr. Donaldson, call it now. Give me a scoreline tonight in Newlands. Uh, Springbok, 16. Uh, the British Lion, 66 points. Look, 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 they will not be forgotten. Quinlan, O'Leary. <laughs> you just imagine how these feel watching Oprah every morning. They should be here fighting. And I'll tell you one thing, Quinlan won't take shite off back his bota. <laughs> hey, come on, lads, here you go. Do, yeah. I have a medium for I, I work with the Irish Revenue. Are you fucking declaring this? You Inland are? Revenue. <laughs> yeah, I hope you declared your trip. and a magnificent conversion to tie the game in a freezing wet cold Cape Town. The most important thing was not to lose, and we didn't lose. We didn't win either. But that's the nature of a draw. There's been no hassle at all getting in, and nobody's come up to me looking for accreditation but I haven't seen accreditation around anybody's neck, so it's time to listen to the press conference. It's a new game, it's a new challenge, and um, that, that's what we've got to look at, and that's why we've tried to look at it technically and tactically um, as, a, as a squad. The huge news is that there's seven Irish men on the team, and the big news is Rob Carney starts, Luke Fitzgerald starts, so it's brilliant. Matthew, well done. Quick forward. Well done, man. Cheers. Here we go. No, Lance. Hector, sorry. Quick forward. You're going to get the players in trouble. Okay. Why? For what? Because. Sure, no, Matthew, I met him in yeah, Wales. I know. I was in his local fish and chip shop. Huh? Thank you. I'm going to get in trouble. No, you're not going to get in trouble. Cheers. Thank you. Well done, Matthew. You've got to put yourself in their shoes and you've got to say, if I want to go to South Africa and win a test series, what have we got to do? And the most important thing is you've got to keep the players focused. They've got to understand what their goal is, what their mission is, how they're going to go about it. So you can understand that element of trying to say, look, guys, stay focused, don't let anything in, let, let's, you know, not let those external influences get in here and distract you. But I think... We must we, be external. We're right? external. I think we're you external are. Influence. I think you are. In fact, probably we all are. I need to get some chocolates sure. for four friends of mine. Well, they're not really friends, but I'm trying to become their friend. Of course. Now, one of them is for Ian McGee, he's head of the team, the Lions Tour. So that's for Ian, he's a good, and that's fine. fine. And the next one is for Greg Thomas, he's head of media. Fine. And do you want to give him a different box? Yeah. We'll, Sandwich? Yeah, we'll get him a different would you like box. Truffles he, or would you like liqueurs? Uh, truffles, because he's, he's got a big job, he's okay, important. Fine. Okay, that's right, fine. Sir. Now, two ladies, one is Christine Connolly, she's a um, communications manager, and she's, okay, I'm fine. trying to be her friend, but she okay, doesn't like fine. me. Okay, um, no, one no, of those for that lady, yeah. And, and, and the next one is Louisa Cheatham, and she's a media manager, press like conference manager. Seashells? Yeah, Louisa, I, don't, I think she's from Cornwall, so she'd this like to see something different. Would you like me to give Fred this for you? Yes, please, and we'll put a little card into them. Thanks, Eunice. Please, can I talk to 
the lions. Let's enjoy the chocolates, Hector. That's for Louisa. Seven Irishmen on the test team tomorrow. Isn't this the time to celebrate a golden era of Irish rugby? Well, look, you've every right to your opinion, Hector, but what I would have to say is this. The fact that there are seven Irish on the team must mean that the rest of them are pretty bloody useless. What do you mean? O'Driscoll is there, probably the ah, greatest player ever. To ah, you gracious. Would you get a grip of yourself, Hector? Would you get a dose of reality inside George, you're, li you're living in the past. You're always living in the past. I'm not living in the past. I'm simply stating it as it is. Look at Jack Kyle, a wonderful player, wonderful sidestep, dummy, swerve, in under the posts, magnificent, Tom Ryan, Mick O'Shea. Who's Mick O'Shea? Who are these people? Well, people may not have heard about them, but I'd like to point to Mick O'Shea, a devil at the breakdown and a master at the rock. We were drinking the Shiraz last night, was yeah. Trevor, oh. which is going out of fashion. We said we'd make we pack down with each other last Thursday. Ah, uh, Jim. Let's go and talk What was that like? There. Well, you talk, ask right, me. What was it like to get the jersey and the boots on again? <sighs> it was great at the time. I'll tell you, he's some tramp, this fella here. <laughs> he hasn't changed. He hit a fella. I know, from a kick -off. I, I, I heard about it. My God. He just like, it was like a galloping oh, stallion a towards galloping him. galloping stallion. And of course, their big second round can stuck a boot in And who came in to help me? Who comes in? Well, they all Did you? Oh, listen, oh, it was like all times. <laughs> all right, everybody, please pay attention. This is a very, very important team meeting. Do not talk to either of these two men. These men are very dangerous. If they approach you to talk to you, to interview you, or to have with you what they call the crack, move away. Move away with dignity and speed. Move away like a lion. For these two men are shit stirrers. Colin Murray here from Auto Eat Television Sport. Recognise me now? We are unable to actually talk to the players, but I would imagine if I was to talk to, say, Luke Fitzgerald, it would probably go something like this. Luke you're chosen on Saturday, They're your first Lions experience, your first taste of a test match. What was your reaction when you heard the great news? I was delighted. Luke Fitzgerald, thank you. We now know that there's a DVD being made by the Lions people, by a company called Pulse, who obviously have paid, I don't know how much money, to make a DVD. It's a reprise of Living with the Lions. They're trying to do, recreate the, the version in 1997. And that is why they're not giving us any access to the players at yeah. all. So it's, it's like a fork in a road. We're trying to go down the official, they're blocking us, there's a roadblock. We're trying to go down the unofficial, there's a roadblock. There's so always we, a way. So we've got to go into a field and cross over the bridge and go under the river and come in the other side. Are you with me? That's a beautiful analogy. Let's come up with a couple of plans. I love you, And Hector. see how we get on. I love you. I love your work as well. Say goodbye to Cape Town. Bye-bye, Capey. Thanks, my name for the lift tractor. You know, even if it did take 44 hours from Cape Town. Oh my God, <laughs> nice parking. Oh, thanks, work, sir. Right, this is, this is. This is. This is. This is Spicer's dad's place. Yeah. His old man's, yeah, he's, he's into mining. Oh man, it's awesome. Brilliant, Hector, bro. Listen, thanks to William and all that for the lift. But uh, he specifically said no culties. See ya. Berkey, I brought you all the way from Cape Town. Thanks a lot, Hack. Bye. Berkey! Berkey! See you at the match. I've come down to a local Sangoma here because we need a blessing. The Lions need some luck, and this is a fortune teller, a very powerful person in the community. Can you please ask him who will score the first try on Saturday? Eh, Lendo, it's a little bit busy, so if you want to go to Bano Zokora, you will go to the trial on Saturday. I'm going to go to the local Hindu team. What's he saying? He said the guy's going to. Score is a uh, Rob Kearney. Rob Kearney? Yes. Yeah. Ask them, how does the lion stop the big man, Bucky's Bota? How do you stop the big Bucka? At Manjo, Ukuru was good. He umstopa ganja, Luguta Anga Konukora, Lendo de ASA Springbok, and I stop a ganja and Utina Bota to kick him in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. <enough. laughs> the guy like Bucky's, we used to say that him and I were very similar because I'm an English. South African, he's an Afrikaans South African, so I used to polarise people and he just pulverised them. There's Bucky's coming out in the name of the Lord. I strike thee down. Just come out and tell him out Bible him. him. Or you go say, I'm a Buddhist. Oh, yeah. Bucky's. Oh, peace. Hit me yeah. and it's eternal damnation <laughs> yeah. for you, my son. Yeah.
They're passionate in Durban about the rugby. But you haven't seen anything. Wait till you get to Pretoria. Do you have hankies? A lot of hankies. Do you have hankies? <laughs> I hope so. If you thought Saturday's one was good, well, I'll tell you, wait till you see uh, this Saturday. They're absolutely mental about it there. Have a look at this. The South African crew have done us proud. The line chasers here. Beer, barbecue. But where are we? We're right in the shadow of the stadium. That's the Loftus Fesbel. Now come on, the Irish and British Lions. The Lions have a good track record here. You know, four times they've played here, they won three. And when it's jam packed, you'll feel the atmosphere. It's very intimidating. How do you kill a lion? Yeah. Slowly. 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 You don't shoot it in the heart. You shoot oh. it in the stomach. Give us your prediction. How do you see the game going for us? Maybe a tight. Our first five minutes, and after that, we'll score three tries and take a series. Just give me the prediction for well, the get a whitewash. <laughs> I think it's going to be a massive game, but I think it's going to be a closer game. Many people think. I hope the referee then understands the rules of the game better than last week, and I hope then the back his border doesn't hold Brian O'Driscoll down and give him three tubs and that. And you know what? If we had five more minutes and scored those tries, we would be going in here with a one 0 win. So with a little bit of Irish luck today, you guys are toast. But I think if Brian hadn't had his hand in Bucky's his pants, he might not have hit him. <laughs> Bucky had the boy. In his pants, not his cock. <laughs> if they hit the ground running today, that could be very dangerous. You know, I mean, you guys know about big stadiums. I mean, uh, you know, Croke Park, where they've been playing now, even Lansdowne Road at, yeah. at full swing is yeah. amazing. This is our equivalent, you know, this is the high felt. This is guys looking back a hundred years and saying, uh, we, we, I we was were there. Oh, exactly. We'll say we were there. The famous Marvin Hagler quote is to starve the doubt and feed the faith, and that's what they really need to do. I think they run out the fight up. They know it's uh, it's the last lifeline. They'll play for survival, um, but the box will have a psychological advantage. I mean, they pulled it off last week. So the Lions in the back of their minds will know they could have won that one. Their spirits will still be high, but they know it's survival time. They need to win this one. But the box can clinch it, boys. This is Loftus. And the game is only two minutes old, but Scott Berger has been seen bent for eye gouging. And Stephen Jones with a beautiful offload to Rob Carney. And Carney goes for the line. And it's a great try. A first try for the line to Rob Carney. And Peterson strikes back immediately for the Springboks. And another three points to the line from the boot of Stephen Jones. 16 points to 8 here at halftime, unbelievable start for the Lions, they went 10-0 up, brilliant try in the corner from Carney, who's having a brilliant, brilliant game. Stephen Jones is moving there, kicking penalties, drop goal at the end, and then the boys get a, get a consolation penalty near the end. 16 points to 8 here, high up in the high belt, right in this game. It's a completely different Lions team, and the Irish boys are playing their part. And the clash of heads there between Jenkins and uh, Brian Habana, and Jenkins is off. Adam Jones now in trouble, and the Lions have lost both their props. And Brian Havana goes to the line defense like an ice cream mother. A wonderful try. And Jack Fury going over, but has he made the line or was it in touch? The referee has given the try. And the clock running down, but Stephen Jones has a chance to equalize, and he's made it. But Adara tackles Fury in the air, and it's a penalty to the about 10 metres inside his own half. Straight bang in the middle of the pitch. The whole of South Africa is willing this to go over. Ben Warner stayed lightly it up. He's made it! What a kick! Spring bucket stolen. Stephen Jones put us equal here. And then right at the net. To see that footage again of that try in the, in the last few minutes because to me that was in touch and I, I, I want to see it again. My little boy played anyway, so don't Who's that? Alan Wynn, second row. He is not. Are you Mr. Wynn Jones? No, Tim Mr. Jones. Wynn Are you Tim Jones? Yeah. Are you the father of Alan Wynn Jones? Well done. Legend. Well done. Legend. Legend. Is this a real one? This is, this is it now? This is it. <laughs> this is live here outside the, Bull, the Blue Bull Stadium in Remind Pretoria. I would add it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm lads, give them a round of applause. He's asking for a proposal on camera. Yay!
Well, I mean, it's an absolute disaster, isn't it? An absolute disaster. I mean, we spent months and months and months and months and months and months and months of planning and preparation. I've been working on our scrum for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and then we finally get it right. Then we lose both our fucking props! The fucking disaster! <laughs> I know the result didn't go our way, but that for me, honestly, was possibly the best match I've seen at club or international level for 10 years. It's amazing that a rugby game can come down to those seconds, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he didn't mean it. I mean, that's just one of the situations where it is illegal, it was a penalty, but it's unfortunate. This was the worst display from anybody representing Ireland since Pierce Brosnan's performance in Mamma Mia! You broke my heart as an Irishman, you broke all the Irish hearts. <laughs> have, you, have you looked at that footage again when you get into the corner? I've looked at the footage again, yeah. Like I said, the other day asked me as well. It, uh, for me, it's one of my, my highlights of my career. I mean, uh, scoring the try, coming on and scoring the winning try in the corner, it's, it's, it's amazing. And now something that I, that I won't forget in, in a couple of years to come. Uh, hello, is that the Sheraton Pretoria? Yes, it is. Can I speak to Warren Gatlin, please? It's Eddie O'Sullivan here, coach of the United States of America, so help me God. One moment, sir. <coughs> uh, hello? Hiya, Warren, it's Eddie O'Sullivan here. E Eddie who? Eddie O'Sullivan. Uh, Eddie, Listen, Eddie. I just thought I'd give you a bow to offer my condolences, you know? Listen, Eddie, it's five o'clock in the morning, mate. It's five o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I don't know my watch, Army. Listen, I thought you just fancy a little recap on, on the match yesterday, you know? Uh, not yes, really, fair, I think you blew it, you know? You blew it in the first test and you certainly blew it in the second test. Well, you know, you brought your opinion, mate. Yeah, well, I, I saw you talking it up, you know, in the press conference before the second test. Jesus, some irony, the fact that you're managing a team sponsored by Brains. Yeah, well, at least I got the job, mate. At least I got the Lawrence uh, job. As I've always said, you know, you learn more from your defeats than your victories. For instance, at this stage, I'm an absolute genius. Yeah, piss off, Eddie. Hello? Hello? What? Shit bag. One bit of fucking luck. We never got a win for the Lions as long as me and you are doing this. If John the Bullheads had been playing yesterday, they would have won that test. There'd be no doubt about it. If he had tackled Brian Habana, he wouldn't have been going out with a cracked head on him. It would be Brian Habana's head that would be cracked. Like the fans are really, really down about it, you know? I mean, they're, they're so down. I just kind of think, look, it's not that bad, you know? Two down, one to play. Still all to play for. Oh, yeah. I'd just like to say, as a Connacht fan, I'm totally sick of being ignored, right? So what I'd like to say is this. Peter de Villiers might be many things. That sophisticated isn't a word I'd use with, with Peter de Villiers. He can be very witty, um, he can be very boring and um, sometimes insulting. I'm a God-given talent. I'm the best ever that I can be. So what you think don't bother me. I know what I am. I don't care a damn. What I would love people is just to stand up and take it on a chin and say, well done, South Africa. Well done for, for, for what you've achieved in, in the series. And well done to everybody out there, like we did in 1997. Peter, congratulations uh, on winning the Thank you, my man. I'm an Irish man. I'm an Irish man. Congratulations on winning the series. <laughs> Rugby is a contact sport, and so is dancing. Why don't we all go to the nearest ballet shop, get some nice tutus, get a great dancing show going on, no eye gouging, no tackling, no nothing, and no, then we will enjoy it. I have decided to issue each lion with their own pair of protective eyewear in order to eliminate any further chance of gouging. Work your way through those, Mr. Burger. Joining me now on ChaseTheLines.com is esteemed broadcaster and uh, RT legend Bill O'Hurley. Hold on a sec now, hold on a sec now. Well, I've been 40 years presenting live television. I'm RT's most experienced broadcaster, so I don't know who the hell you think you are presenting this. Oh, I'll present this item, thanks very much. Sorry about that, Bill. All right, if I can turn to you, first of all, Hector, and ask you, what exactly are yourself and other muckhead Cooper doing down here? Can I ask you, Bill? Yeah. What are you doing down here? Well, I was asked to come down and uh, play in a golf charity event, which I was more than happy to do. I, I like the golf, and I, I certainly like uh, the charity. What sort of charity was it? Uh, 
I can't remember the charity, but I got paid a feckin' fortune, I can tell you. Would you do much of that work? Oh, I do. That's where I make my living, really. Charity is charity is where it's at. In, in tight times, I can tell you, you make an absolute fortune. Good, Dennis. Good. 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 All right. Well, Mr. Donaldson, this is Soweto, one of the most famous uh, townships in the world. Yes, I'm well, aware, I'm well aware of that Soweto as a very famous township. What's well, your point, Mr. Well, the point you is, have brought me here on this trip. Yeah, but the point is we're here and it's not dangerous and, and you can come here and embrace the township. And I'm we're well so aware it's not dangerous. Sure, look at the place. It's absolutely paradise. Listen, if these people want to see it tough, if these people want to see what a really hard life is, they should walk down to Belfast Street at, at 11 o'clock at night or they should go to the Shang Hill area of Belfast. What about Mr. Mandela lived around the corner? Mr. Mr. Mandela, so what? This is this is Bishop Tutu's house, his, his first house, his first residence. Sure, look at it, palatial. Oh, but what Mandela spent Nelson most of Nelson Mandela, my backside. Most was first like... 25 years in prison. Who cares? Can we all have our crosses to bear? Jesus Christ, get over it. Ulster says no. Soweto says who cares? That's incredible. Hector, come on, let's get out of here. Come on. Right, Brookie, good to see you. That Donaldson guy has completely lost it, man. Hop in. Let's go. Hit it, Brookie. Ulster. Hey, have a nice time in Soweto, yeah. <laughs> yeah wait, wait. Hagner! Hey! Mr. O'Hunga gone! Mr. O'Hunga gone! Mr. O'Hunga gone! Wait, please! I didn't mean what I said about Soweto. I don't really want to stay here. Help! Rule number one, right? In South Africa, you have to remember that the rules are different to anywhere else in the world, right? So there's the ball on the ground. You forget about the ball, and you fella, you stick your two fingers into this fella's eye. That's lesson number one, eye gouging. Right, good man, go back in the line there. Now, lesson number two is the spear tackle. Now, this fella here, what's your name? Good man. The spear tackle is the ball is down there, you forget about the ball, and you drive him into the ground, you drop him into the ground, you drive him into the ground. And last but not least is the headbutt. Right, come out to me here again, you fella. The head, the ball is down there. Forget about the, forget about the ball all together in your headbutt. Bang into the nose. Okay, are you hiding with me? Yeah. That's how you play rugby in South Africa. Listen, Hack, did they have Heineken in here? D listen, the they, look at nice. they have beer. This is a she bean. Come on, if you want to drink, follow me. Come on, Berkey. She bean. You have to do what the locals do. Like a she bean in Connor Moore. This somewhere. is a she bean. This is where the locals drink. Get in there. They don't speak Irish here. Get right? in. I'll show you. Uh, can I have a Hansa, please? Berkey. Hansa. Uh, what are you drinking what's here? This? Hansa. That's Hansa. Hansa. Look at local beer here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on, the Heineken. Africa, South Africa. Sorry? Yes? Um, 300 pounds. Yeah, 300 pounds. One, one second, one second. 300 grand? No, no, 300 grand. You sort that out, because I have no cash in it. Well, I'm, I'm part d'argent, pal. Part d'argent. Well, we want to sort it out quick, because if we've no cash, we're, we're out of here. Quick, give me a seat. I've absolutely no cash. See if you take a seat. There's no hail in the blue range here. Um, sorry, did you take later? Just cash. Right, OK. Let's get out of here. See ya. In South Africa, our land. That was uh, superb. Thank you. Well, there's no question about it. This has been a very, very tough test series. And as we look towards Saturday, our latest bill of health is as follows Tommy Bow, injured elbow, Brian O'Driscoll, concussion. Jamie Roberts, injured wrist, Ronan O'Gara, injured eye, Adam Jones, dislocated shoulder, Gethin Jenkins, broken head. Colin Murray here from RTE Television Sport, about to go into the press conference where the Lions will announce the team for the third test in Johannesburg. Well, the mood here is one of anticipation and, of course, apathy. In fact, who gives a goddamn shit? John Smith is brilliant. Yeah. He yeah. is a fantastic captain. It was two tight test matches. 
we've worked hard for the victory, um, but we know we've been up against some tough opponents. And um, I think it's a series that every single one of our players will remember for the rest of his life. Never gets flustered. He'll always ask you a question at the appropriate time. At the you know at the, he just picks the right moment. Colin Murray from RT Television Sport. Do you prefer winning or losing? Um, well, I do like I do prefer winning. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like losing. I never have done. Well, why the fuck do you keep losing then? <laughs> Hey John, how are you getting on? Hector. Hector. You will? Pleased to meet you. Have a look at this. We've followed, have a look at this. Look, look. I actually did have a look at did it. Did you see it? It was, it was did you see phenomenal. It? We've, we've, we've been following you for weeks in this. Okay, how tired are you, you guys have, have inside, a quick look eh? inside. Look in there. This is the future of rugby, John. <laughs> yeah, look in there. Do you know who's been in here? Gary Teichman, Joel Stransky, Bobby Skinstad. That all is the legends. Phenomenal. All the legends. And now I'm going to ask you to sign this. Sign it up there now. As where would, you, where here, would you like it? Series winning captain. This is a privilege for me. She's gone Cape Town, Durban, Cape Town, Johannesburg. She's only the accelerator cable broke. But listen, quick question. Uh, congratulations on winning. I'm an Irish man and I know Paul O'Connell well. Uh, yeah. Have you spoken to him because it's tough being a Lions captain and losing a series? Yeah, it is. And he's such a competitor with such a great history as well. So he's a, a great man. And you know, I think we'll have a. We've had a few chats in between the two tests, but it's always a bit difficult because there's always that third one looming. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to our function afterwards where we can finally have sit down, have beers. a few beers. And and hopefully it. they would have flown in a bit of Guinness for the boys as yeah. well. Sometimes the public have a go at him and they underestimate him, but he. He's a great captain. He has the ability to pull. You know, in South Africa, we've got quite a, a vast uh, different cultures. You've got Afrikaans, you've got the English, then you've got the black side of things. So you've got to put it all together and you mould a team. Sure. So he's got a hard job. It's as hard as mcgeekin has got with all you Irish and Welsh. You've won the World Cup, but like, you've, won, you've won Tri-Nations. Is this the icing on the cake now as a captain to, to beat the Lions? And, uh, yeah, cool. yeah, I sort of said to someone earlier, he wake up, he's trying to pitch yourself because uh, if, if how fortunate we've been. So it's, uh, it's a great moment and um, I'm really happy that it's, it's have, come to this. I have two T-shirts for you. These are three lads, you probably know them, Tomas O'Leary and that's Jerry Flannery, yeah. Alan Quinn and they never came. So this T-shirt, I want you to stay playing rugby and come to Ireland to face the Grand Slam champions, you the world champions. Absolutely. If you score a try, have this under your Springbok jersey. <laughs> and I'll take my jersey off like a soccer player. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you one thing, you become a legend in Ireland. I can't take, it off, take my shirt off without having a shirt underneath because everyone will see the size of my stomach. <laughs> well, listen, and there, there, there's another T-shirt we got made up. Oh, that's brilliant. That's the two of you. But listen, we've had great memories. You broke my yeah. heart. You broke my heart. Oh, this was the toughest week ever for an Irish man in Johannesburg. Oh, it's but been listen, a great series. And we could have gone either way, which is, which is good for the game. There it is. John Smith, legend. I think uh, there's some pride at stake for both sides. But you must expect that the Springboks will go out on Saturday and try and make it 3-0, and I don't expect anything else of them. I think it would technically be a successful tour if they won one test. Joining me back in the line chaser is marauding Toulouse forward and Irish legend Trevor Brennan. Oh, Trevor, that, can, that, that healed up well. Oh, it's healing up well till I fell out of the shower this morning. <laughs> I banged it again. Banged it must be the seat. altitude that's healing that. Altitude, altitude. They've, they've had no luck. What's your view of the whole tour? Oh, well, I think it's really you, Hector. You know, everywhere you go, they seem to do bad. You went to New Zealand and got hammered. You went out to France and Ireland got hammered. Now you come over here to South Africa and we get fucking hammered. They have to ban you from these tours. That's oh. it. Full stop. I'm joined now by a couple of Irish fans outside Coca-Cola Park, lads. It's been a tough week in Johannesburg. I've been depressed. I had to go to a psychiatrist. Same. What do you think of the game today? Today, lines go through. I'm not too sure. We're not the last two tests, so... A bit, lot of changes. A lot of injuries, a lot of changes. Tommy Bow in the centre, though, will do it, you know? You think so? Yeah, you Where will. are you from? Dublin. What, you, what, what? Give me a score. Give me a prediction. I don't know, 50 nil. I don't support rugby. I'm just here on the piss, so... <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes to go to kick off for the final test match, lads. The buzz is here. The anticipation is here. 
here. It's the best stadium I've seen so far on tour. My head says the Springbok, my heart says the Lions. But I'll tell you one thing, they're going to get stuck in them. It's going to be a battle, lads. A battle. And the Lions certainly look up for this third test. A great start by them. And Jamie, he's the first thing through. And he offloads wonderfully to Shane Williams with the opening fly for the Lions. And Stephen Jones heads the points. And Shane Williams going up the wing and another try. Half time at the Coca-Cola Stadium, lads. Shane Williams going it for two tries. Bad move. Simon Shaw needed a lot in the back. He's on the yellow card and Sidney The score is 15 6 as we go into half time. We could be on the brink of our first ever Lions victory on Chase the Lions and Chase the Lions. Hang on, man, I'm talking to the television. Say hello. In the Lions under pressure now, but here comes Hugo Munio with an interception and he's running the length of the field. And surely now the box will not come back from this. Jamie Heaslip was it definitely the match. They should never give him Shane Williams. Jamie Heaslip was awesome. Say, Patrick, did you bless them this morning? I blessed them all. They got, all of them. They, what did you say to them? I said, winners. I, I believe the spectators might just do a, 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 a big success. You sit in a stadium and you almost feel like you're not yeah. playing it out. It's a big thing in rugby, you know, the, the tradition of it and the history of it. It's not something that happens on a, on, you know, that often. So it was, it was a massive honour for us. I think the Lions like touring in South Africa. I think they like coming here because it's a sport that we love in this country. So obviously, it's a great privilege to be picked for the Lions, you know, because that is the, the, the goal for, for a rugby player. Four nations and players from four different countries. It's very unique. Do you get close to the Lions? Hello, Geech. Yeah, what a... <laughs> What's the future for the Lions Tour? Disaster. Failure. Forget it. It's a done deal. I think it's the best brand ever to tour South Africa. Oh, shit. Oh, my God, to get home. Shut up! Hey, and, and we wanted to call it the Irish and British Lions, you know what I mean? <laughs> what do you think of the great Brian O'Driscoll, the greatest rugby player to ever take a ball into his hand? Who's that, sorry? Are your son's hands as big as these? Skulk! was merely trying to go for the ball. The eyeball. Leicester, Leicester, Leicester. Leicester. <laughs> I think we got some Leicester. new fans. 